Battle of Des Moines, Iowa, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you to Governor Branstead. What a terrific leader you have here in this state. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate your help. Lieutenant Governor Reynolds, thank you for your help, and Senator Grashley, and also Tom Latham, Congressman Latham, and uh, a special shout out to the Des Moines Register. Thanks for your endorsement. And I have to admit, I always like listening to the Oak Ridge Boys. I appreciate their generosity being here this morning. Well, thanks, thanks to you so very much for your energetic welcome. That's really something. And you know, your, uh, your voices are being heard all over the nation this morning. And they're heard loud and clear in my heart as well. And I want to thank you. And special thanks to... Uh, to you that have been doing all the work out there for my campaign by making calls from our victory centers, by putting up a sign in your yard or in someone else's yard, uh, <laughs> by convincing a co-worker to, uh, to, to get behind Paul Ryan and me. And now let's make sure that we get everyone we know out to vote on Tuesday. Got to get that done. This is a huge... This is a huge turnout, and what, what makes this rally um, and all your work that much more inspiring is because you're doing it because you care about America. Paul, Paul and I have not promised you a bigger check from the government, and, um, and we haven't promised to take from some people to redistribute to you. We have, uh, we've instead promised to rebuild the economy and to tame the growth of government and restore the principles that made America the greatest nation in the history of the earth. This is a campaign about America and about the future we're gonna leave our children. We thank you, we ask you to stay with it all the way, all the way to our victory on Tuesday night. Uh, it's possible that you may have some friends or maybe even family members who haven't made up their mind yet who to vote for. And so I'd ask you to ask them to look beyond the speeches and the attacks and all the ads and look to the record. Talk is cheap, but a record is real and it's earned with real effort. Change, you can't measure change in speeches. You measure change in achievements. Now, four years ago, four years ago, the candidate Obama promised us to do an awful lot. He was going to do so much for us, but he fell very short of that. He promised to be a post-partisan president, but he became most partisan, attacking dividing, blaming. He was going to uh, create jobs, remember that? That was his focus, but instead he focused on Obamacare, which killed jobs. He said he was gonna cut the federal deficit in half, he doubled it. He said that unemployment would now be at 5.4%. We just learned on Friday at 7.9%. That's nine million jobs short of what he promised. Employment is higher today than when Barack Obama took office. This is very different than what he promised. His record is very different than his word. He promised that he'd propose a plan to save Social Security and Medicare from insolvency. He didn't. Instead, he raided $716 billion from Medicare to pay for Obamacare. He said he'd lower health insurance premiums for the average family in America by $2,500 a year. Any of you seen that? No, as a matter of fact, they're up by $3,000 a year. And gasoline, for the average family, they're paying $2,000 a year more than when President Obama was elected. Now, the other thing I'll mention, he said he was going to work across the aisle on the most important issues. I was surprised to learn that he has not met on the economy 
or on the budget or on jobs with either Republican leader of the House or the Senate since July. You see, instead of building bridges, he's made the divide between our parties wider. But let me tell you why it is that I think he's fallen so short of what he's promised. It's because he cared more about a liberal agenda than he did about repairing the economy. I mean, do you think Obamacare created jobs? Did his war on coal and oil and gas create jobs? Did Dodd-Frank regulations help banks make more loans? Does raising taxes put people to work? How about his avalanche of new regulations? Did they help small businesses? You see, almost every measure he took hurt the economy. It hurt our fellow Americans. We got 23 million Americans struggling to find a good job. One in six Americans is poor today. And the middle class, middle class are being squeezed with lower take-home pay and higher prices for gasoline, for health insurance, for food, for clothing. I, I spoke yesterday with the wife of a 60-year-old uh, man in the prime of his life, let me tell you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, he has worked for 40 years as a welder, but he just got laid off. And she asked me what I could do to help him and, and them. And she made it very clear. He wasn't looking for a government check. He wants a job. The president thinks more government is the answer. No, more good jobs, that's the answer. The question of this election comes down to this. Do you want four more years like the last four years, or do you want real change? Look, President Obama promised change, but he couldn't deliver it. I not only promised change, I have a record of achieving it. I built a business. I turned around another business. I helped put the Olympics back on track. And then with the Democrat legislature, I helped turn my state from deficit to surplus from job losses to job growth, and from higher taxes to higher take-home pay. That's why I'm running for president. I want to help the country do those same things.